It's Sunday, the 18th of July. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lario channel. And isn't it strange how sometimes these accidents seem to happen in threes? We've had three fatal general aviation accidents here in the Northern California area this past week. The first one, of course, the 421C Golden Eagle fatality at, out of Monterey Airport. We've had two since then. That's what we're going to talk about today. Regarding the 421C Monterey crash, nothing new on that accident at this time. However, the 74-year-old pilot, who's well-loved and well-known throughout the aviation community in the Bay Area of Northern California, folks that do know her well say her voice is naturally kind of a wobbly voice. However, there that that uh, clearance that she read back still sounded awfully odd to me. We're still awaiting. I haven't heard any additional information about the so-called missing part of the airplane that was that appeared to have potentially fallen off the airplane before the aircraft crashed. I've heard nothing more about that or even if they've found this so-called missing part on that crash. So we have two more fatal accidents here in Northern California. Let's look on the computer here and show you what we know so far. First up is November 4474 Hotel Amuni M20J that occurred on this fatal accident occurred on July 15, 2021 in Dinsmore, California. We'll show you that on the map here in a minute. This aircraft apparently owned and operated by Henry Punt, I believe out of Southern California. This is the M20J or what we used to call originally the Super there were the Mooney 201. I, these are great airplanes. I used to own a, a M20E Mooney. And these, I believe these Moonies here, the M20Js, are still the IO360 powered 200 horsepower engines with a laminar flow wing. These are not short field takeoff or landing aircraft. This is a laminar flow wing on these Mooney aircraft. They are a very efficient fast cruising airplane at altitude but they do need a, a certain amount of runway to to take off on especially when loaded up like this one was with four people so weight and balance and loading is certainly going to be a factor that investigators will be considering when they investigate this accident especially when you look at the airport that this accident occurred at dinsmore fairly familiar with it apparently this aircraft was also Involved in an incident on January 26 of this year, the aircraft aborted takeoff and struck a runway light at Fullerton Municipal Airport in Orange County, California. Now let's go take a look at Dinsmore. If we look at, let's see, let's go here. If we look up 4474 Hotel on FlightAware, they departed Fullerton Airport and headed right on up to Dinsmore at a speed of, uh, yeah, good ground speed of nearly 180 miles an hour. That's Mooney speeds for you. And it looks like they beelined it right up towards Dinsmore. Dinsmore Airport is located here in Northern California on the Mad River, not far from Ruth, California. When I did my recent Ruth report, I headed up towards Dinsmore in an in interest of checking it out. But it was much too windy and that airport was too far down in a steep canyon for me to consider attempting in the Husky. So these, these guys flew up here to Dinsmore, and this accident occurred on takeoff. And apparently, according to eyewitness reports, they were taken off to the south or this direction at Dinsmore, which is the preferred direction for takeoff. However, that usually puts you in a tailwind condition taken off this way. Dinsmore Airport is only 2,500 feet long right there and has had and is at an elevation of 2,375 feet and is surrounded by very high terrain. There's a nearly 6,000 foot mountain right there and a 5,185 feet. So it's just to the south. So it's deep down in this Highway 36 Valley located right there. Let's look on the Google Maps. So if we turn on the Google Maps, you can see Dinsmore Airport is located right near the tiny community of Dinsmore. There's no fuel, there's no FBO, there's no nothing at this airport. Just an expensive payphone, and that's about it. And as you roll in on here, you can see the high terrain surrounding this airport. And roll in even further, uh, we can pick up the runway right there, right beside the Highway 36. As you can see, there's no clear way in and out of this airport that doesn't involve some maneuvering. If you're going to take off to the south, you got to bank it over 
pretty good to the right, bend it over to the right to stay in the lower terrain. Of course, the this, <laughs> this is going upstream, but you've got a good long run of low elevation to work with. If you were to take off downstream, it just punches you right into the side of this mountain right here. So it's pretty much a one-way airstrip. The kind of the wrong way. Normally you want to land upstream and take off downstream. You got to do kind of the opposite here at Dinsmore. So according to eyewitness reports, this aircraft was taking off to the south and got in the bank turn. First off, they barely cleared the fence at the end of the runway, the Mooney with the laminar flow wing, and then got it in the turn to clear the trees and stalled it in, crashed and burned somewhere over in this area. So this is certainly a pilot judgment issue here. And according to some of the scuttlebutt I'm hearing on the streets, these guys may have been pushing their luck in this aircraft uh, before and guys were trying to get him to knock it off but that's unsubstantiated rumors from the street but this aircraft was involved in another previous incident just earlier this year so Dinsmore Airport and a Mooney 20 201 with uh, four folks on board is not a good combination not to mention the hot temperatures here density altitude even though the field elevation of 2300 feet Density altitude could have easily put them up over 4,000 feet with the kind of hot temperatures we've been having here at this time or last week. Up next is the Bonanza crash in Angwin Airport, uh, California here. November 112 Tango Whiskey occurred on July 16th. This is near Napa, California. This aircraft apparently did a go around after botching a, the landing, bouncing hard on the landing, according to eyewitness reports, attempted to go around and apparently clipped some trees on the go around and stalled into the vineyard below. Again, this aircraft was landing to the south and the go around was to the south. We'll take a look at the airport here in a minute. This is the Angwin Airport located near uh, in Nap near Napa, north of Napa in Napa County, I believe it is. 3,200 feet long at an elevation of 1,875 feet. And this is kind of just the opposite of Dinsmore. This airport is located on top of a bit of a plateau. But it, do, it can get some squirrely winds working across, kind of a crosswind across this runway. Looking at the train on the Google Maps, Angwin, California. Where do they put the airport? Right here. Here's the runway, north and south runway, located on top of this plateau. So apparently it was a, a, a fast landing, a bounced landing, leading to a go around after landing to the south with the aircraft striking trees and stalling. And I'm not sure if they ended up way down here or over in this vineyard in here, but they ended up in the vineyard south of the airport. And I'm not sure what trees it, it is that they clipped on this go around. This Bonanza had three people on board. This is a IO520 powered Bonanza. So they should have had plenty of power for the go around. This aircraft also originated out of Southern California, French Valley Airport, heading on up to, there we go, to Angwin when they had their go around and crash after the go around. So this aircraft should have had plenty of power, even with three people on board, to affect this go-around if it was done early enough. The only other thing I could say is uh, investigators may be looking at was the prop in, a, in full uh, flat pitch, 
high RPM, low pitch setting. In other words, was the prop control all the way in along with the throttle during this go around? Was he developing full power for his go around? Or did he simply make his go around decision much too late after he had already landed and bounced quite far down the runway? In other breaking news, surprise, surprise, the FAA has finally suspended the maintenance operation of Transair, the freight hauler out of Hawaii that sent this 737 to the bottom of the ocean, just short of Honolulu. They've been, the FAA has been inspecting Transair, or they've been after him since last fall, since this crash. They've since effectively grounded the entire airline by stopping their ability to do further maintenance inspections on their aircraft. Wall Street Journal. So two more fatal accidents, both of these involving loss of control of the aircraft. I suspect we're going to find out this was pilot-induced loss of control of the aircraft. Training and proficiency and flying within your limits is, is all I can suggest. Now let's go to NCWeb for a quick uh, fire update. Here on NCWeb, let's go back to the Beckworth complex that we've been covering recently. In recent updates, remember this started as a small lightning strike that escaped and is now up to a whopping 105,000 acres with 73% containment. So they've, they're finally getting this one under control as it's burned pretty much all the way to the desert. So they've been able to stop the left and right flanks of this fire and get it, the desert stopping it the train basically stopping it here at the head of the fire. We were talking about um, Bodad Airstrip located right up here north of Frenchman Lake. Well, we've got some pictures here from Air Attack 17 to share with you. The fire did surround the Bodad Airstrip, but it looks like fire crews were able to save the hangar and house here at Bodad. So this is an interesting mosaic pattern burn. This is out of a, the Air Attack 17, which is based out of Grass Valley Air Attack Base. Uh, the Air Attack officer shared these photographs with me and allowed that I can share them with you. Um, this is, of course, after the fire had burned through. The fire was burning from the top of the picture towards the bottom of the picture. So we're looking kind of southwest here. And here is the airstrip, here is the hangar, and I believe Bo's house is somewhere in here, and it's still in one piece. So they did do a, a superhuman effort to do some structure protection along this hangar and house. A couple of water drops from a helicopter. What Bo shared with everybody, and I'll send you the link, is um, a ring camera. You know, those security cameras from your door of your house and he captured the the fight to save his uh, place there and it was very very interesting so as you can see some of these trees are completely torched and some of these trees will probably be okay a lot of these trees are going to end up dying off eventually so so a real mosaic patterns as to what, what was completely lost and, and what was not. And the green wetlands down here are still green. With the fire cleaning out all the underbrush as needed, but taking out a lot of the timber with it. Here's another angle looking a little bit towards the northwest this time. Here's the hangar we're talking about, and here's the airstrip. The airstrip is basically a dirt airstrip. And so, of course, nothing's going to burn on the dirt. And the mosaic pattern of the green pasture down below. And the fire moving through the timber, preserving some timber and torching other timber. And it'll remain to be seen how much of this timber survives this fire. Meanwhile, the big new fire that's causing concern is the Tamarack fire has really made a run for it. Again, this is another lightning strike from weeks ago that has escaped and is headed, well, it looks like it's pretty well clobbered Markleyville already. 
If you're familiar with Markleyville, California, well, correction, looks like it's just surrounded the tiny little hamlet of Markleyville. And right up here is one of my favorite destinations, Grover Hot Springs. It looks like it's surrounded the hot springs, but right now it looks like they have been able to keep the fire out of the hot springs area. Just a beautiful little spot in the Sierras. Sierra Mountains. It looks like it has burned over the Alpine Airport. There's a little high altitude airstrip up here that looks like it's burning through right now. And again, this fire is burning all the way back down to 395 and probably will do so before they get it stopped. And it looks like it merged with the East Fork fire right here. Let's take a look at this camera, Sierra at Tahoe. Let's go back for the, no, I want to make it small. Oh, it's not going to allow me. Yes, here we go. The playback. I think this is a six-hour playback. This is current as of today. Just getting larger and larger as the afternoon wears on. And then the smoke clouds forming or merging with the... No, there's more. That's more smoke clouds basically becoming a uh, small pyrocumulus clouds shift and change of direction of wind bringing the smoke right in towards the camera let's go six hour time lapse this is hawkins peak and it's a little too close to the smoke and fire and we're going to see a wind shift here as the fire i believe it pops up out of this canyon right towards the camera Yeah, you can see it starting to spot up here. Wind shift. And that almost looks like moisture hitting the camera. A lot of ash and dirt on the camera lens after that wind shift. So, a lot of extreme fire behavior for July 18th. And th this, this is driven by some amount of wind, but not an extreme amount of wind. I mean, we haven't seen nothing yet on the winds and the type of fires that we're going to see later on this later this summer and into this fall. So I got to finish packing. I got to make arrangements, me and the whole fam damly here, to head on out to the ACCA Awards, July 23rd, 24th, 25th at Whiteside County Airport not too far outside of Chicago, not too far away from Oshkosh. So I hope to be, well, I will be at the ACCAs <laughs> and hope to make it on up to Oshkosh this year. So if you're in the neighborhood, come on by and say hi, and we'll see you there. Thanks so much for your support of this channel, especially over on Patreon, because you know the drill. Thanks for your support. See you here.